All right, so let's talk about some of the other classes and their build progressions. Uh, in general, if you would ask me something about cookie cutter builds, I'd say, yeah, I don't, I'm not really in favor of them. So let's just pretend like these are going to be generalized builds, builds versus specialized builds. We'll say that instead. And really in this game, if you want to choose a rule of thumb for leveling, you can just say, well, level up your or your class's trademark power and then do passive and then you should be okay. And then pick whatever you want. That works for basically every class. It may not be ideal, but it'll work. Uh, the three classes that I like that strategy the least on are probably Adept, Engineer, and Infiltrator, actually. But for this class, the Sentinel, it works really well. Let's take a look at some of the powers. You got Throw, you know how that works. Warp, Barrier and Armor Power. Overload, Shields and Synthetic Power, Cryoblast is CC Power, and then you have your bonus power. Right now it's set on Stasis. So when you start a Sentinel character at level 1, you should have a point in Throw, a point in Tech Armor, and if you beat in the game, a point in a bonus power. On PC, you can't take Stasis right away, so I would take Slam. I'll talk about bonus powers at the end. But you can just pretend this is Slam, otherwise... You can take stasis right away on Xbox, I guess. As far as I know. Anyway, let's take a look at the uh, trademark power tech armor as we talk about leveling them out. When you import a level 50 character from Mass Effect 1, you'll be at level 3, which should have 7 points. Uh, Shepard's points go or the way they work in Mass Effect 2 is level 1 through 20 you get 2 points per level and then levels 21 through 30 you get 1 point per level so level 3 you have 7 points total uh, you'll have 4 laying around when you get to Lazarus Station so right away you want to get Tech Armor Rank 2 Basically, tech armor, what it does is it gives you bonus shields. The bonus shields will last forever, or until an enemy depletes them. And then when you hit shield gate, it'll send out a pulse. And that pulse has, at rank 1, a 7.5 meter radius, does 30 points of damage, does 100 newtons of force. So that's pretty nice for staggering enemies. Yeah, you can't really expect it to finish off enemies most of the time on insanity, but sometimes it will. And when you activate it, you get 25% shields at rank 1. Anyway, when you're in Lazarus at level 3, just dump another point in Tech Armor rank 2. And that'll get you to 50% shield bonus, and then pulse rate is 10 meters, damage 40, pulse force 130. So those are all trending in the right direction. The fun starts when you get to... whoops. Tech Armor Rank 3, there's a little quirk that isn't even mentioned here. When you get to Rank 3, then whenever you activate Tech Armor, it'll reset squad mate cooldowns, which is one of the best perks of any trademark power in the game. Supposedly that wasn't supposed to be in the released version of Mass Effect 2, but they must have forgotten to take it out, and we can benefit from that. It's also part of why Sentinel's one of the strongest characters for getting through insanity, at least if you want to manage your squad somewhat carefully, because you'll have extra squad power spamming. The downside is what this does for the Sentinel play style. It makes it probably the biggest one-trick pony in the game. You can argue maybe Soldier still is, but with Sentinel, you're going to want to use tech armor about as much as possible. Get it destroyed, which also means close combat most of the time. It can be pretty fun, though. So, you should be able to get pick up rank 3 of tech armor at around level 5, which is going to be where you're doing Professor in a relatively typical run. So go ahead and get that. At rank 5, you'll have 11 total points, and you can even put one in passive, which is what I do. The, pa the passive defender, what you get is little health, and then you get power recharge bonus, which is the main thing, and then you get your 
charm or your paragon or renegade bonuses. So go ahead and just dump one in there. Your passive power recharge affects all of your powers and importantly it affects tech armor. But tech armor should also benefit from tech cooldowns once you research it. Anyway, going through the game, you'll probably do Archangel around level 7, which should be 15 points. And at that point, you should have enough to get rank 4 of tech armor. See, we're just pretty much racing all the way up tech armor. The enhanced evolutions at the end are either assault armor or power armor. Assault armor, armor is now rigged for maximum pulse when it's destroyed, increasing damage, force, and radius. It also gives additional shield boost after detonation. This is pretty nice and is in general the evolution you want to take for nearly all of the common builds and sentinel play styles. Recharge time 12 seconds, shield strength 75% max shields, radius 18 meters which is pretty huge, pulse damage 100, pulse force 240. And then after you hit shield gate and tech armor breaks then you get 50% shields back which is actually pretty cool. Power armor, the main thing with it is that while it's active you get a damage bonus. And the other thing is that the activation shield bonus is 100% instead of 75%. So while tech armor is active, you have more total shield strength. You have more power damage relative to assault armor. The difference is when this blows up, the radius is smaller, damage and force is smaller. And really this is more for a sentinel that kind of just wants to be tanky and then cast from maybe range or at least from cover. The reason I don't like this is Sentinel skill tree doesn't really have a lot of area control powers. It really doesn't have much in the way of control at all unless you go through Cryoblast and that kind of makes the point investment a little strange. It's not like Adept who has all sorts of CC powers that you can utilize and is like a real controller. So that's why I don't like power armor but you might find a good use for it. Also depends on what bonus power you take. But anyway, take Assault Armor for a typical run. And then you should also have another two points. You can just go ahead and put it in passive. You have something that looks like this for Archangel. You'll have Squad Cooldown Reset, you'll have Assault Armor. And then you have your little throw for fast CC or even slam for fast CC if you took that. Uh, but since it's after Professor, you should have the Tech Lab, and if you have enough Ezo, you could switch to Stasis if you wanted. Which is probably what I'd do. Although, if I wanted to... I mean, my typical squad for... for uh, Archangel is Morden and Miranda, so if you left it on Slam, you do Warp Bombs with Miranda. But it's up to you. Stasis would be slightly better if you don't hack the Amir. And if you want to ragdoll some of the bigger targets and glitch them. Anyway, uh, you'll run into Horizon around level 12 or so. You'll have 25 points and by that time you should be able to get all the way up to rank 4 of passive. The evolutions there are Guardian and Raider. The main difference is the Guardian gives you higher power recharge time and it's a pretty hefty bonus, 30%. This is also the one that gives you the most health and the most Paragon Renegade bonus. Those are kind of ancillary. The power recharge is why you want it. And then <laughs> you're, when you get this in tech cooldowns, your Assault Armor is going to recharge very quickly. And at that point you'll be running all over the place. Uh, the only thing is, you won't have a lot of damage protection by Horizon, so you might have to be a little bit... take a little more care than you will later in the game. But Raider, basically it's the power damage choice. So this is... Or meshes a little bit better with going with the power armor version of tech armor. And for some kind of power damage caster sentinel that I honestly have never really played. 
But it could work, depends on your bonus power. And style, but go with Guardian if you're doing a relatively typical run. And really, because of the points, this is probably a relatively simple build for getting through Horizon. I definitely have Stasis by Horizon just so you can deal with the Scions easily if you want to use the glitch. And also because I take weird squad mates on Horizon anyway. But if you're going to take Miranda, you might as well could consider Slam. But if you wanted to do Warp Bomb Spam on Horizon, you probably want Jack or Jacob plus Miranda. And then just use Tech Armor Cooldown Reset to just keep getting a pull and plus a Warp back. But anyway, this is a decent level 12 build. The next major milestone would be like Collector Cruiser. And that where you hit that is really going to depend on what missions you take in between Horizon and... Well, for the next five missions. So that could really be anywhere from around like level 16 to level 20, depending on if you delay it. But assuming we're getting to level 16 or a relatively early time, or what I would do after getting your passive and tech armor leveled up is invest in warp two to unlock, I mean throw two to unlock warp. And then what I would do is go to warp three. Since warp three should be sufficient to strap or strip basic barriers and armor. At least if you keep up with biotic damage upgrades. And then, around level 16, you'll have another three points after this skill investment that you see here. And you can either bank them to get heavy warp at level 17, or if you're definitely going to just fight the cruiser at level 16, I would probably just put three and throw there right away. And that way you can have a little bit more powerful throw to knock stuff off the of ledges. That's not hugely important though. You might want to just go with Heavy Warp. It's up to you. A lot of skill progression is going to depend on your squad mates and what mission order you're doing. But the other thing is that it's not really too useful to wring your hands and have too much anxiety about which power to pick over one another. Because you can always just wait a few levels and <laughs> fix it if you screw up or just retrain. But I would just go ahead and get throw three right then at 16. And like I said, the next choice is really between heavy throw and heavy warp. Warp three has enough damage, like I said, for most situations. Heavy is really just to help strip elite armor a little better. But I like to take Miranda everywhere anyway, and she's going to have unstable warp probably by then. And I like Garrus, and I like to run around with assault armor, so I don't really care about getting heavy warp. What I would like is heavy throw, since throws cooldowns faster than warp, and I can just ragdoll or kill a mook rapidly and still have my cooldown back for assault armor. So that is what I would do with the next four points. Uh, heavy throw for killing mooks and throwing them farther, and four more hilarity after a pull. Throw field's really only good on husk spam missions, and in my opinion, although it's not bad if you have Garrus or Miranda to area overload, so it's up to you what you want. I would just take heavy throw. At level 20, you'll have uh, 41 points. And depending on what missions you're doing and what you want to do, you can either just get heavy warp right then. I'd just go ahead and get rank 2 of overload for blowing up pyros if you're going to be doing like Zaid's mission or if you're going to Haystrom. That's a good idea. You could have gotten it earlier. It's up to you. It really doesn't matter at this point. 
a lot of the leveling after you have assault armor and guardian doesn't matter a great deal, but I would probably just get overload to around this point. And then uh, basically what you're going to do is level up overload and level up warp and skip cryoblast to get to 30, so whatever order. You'll note that this kind of generic build is skipping Cryoblast altogether. And the reason is Cryoblast, I mean, it's a good power for area CC, but you're going to need area strip defense stripping. And it's going to take away a little bit from your, from your tech armor spam. But, I mean, you can take it. The difference is, if you're going to do a Cryoblast build, you're going to be pulling points out of, like, Overload or Throw or even Warp. So, just keep that in mind. And then, quickly, let's talk about the bonus powers. Advanced training. Alright, so Sentinel has a lot of powers and it's for power or tech armor spam anyway, so ammo powers aren't horrible. I would probably take warp over AP, but AP isn't a bad choice. Barrier doesn't make sense. Tech armor is better than barrier. Same with fortification and GSB. Slam's a good choice early game. It gives you a warp bomb primer. You can also use it in lieu of throw for a single target CC. Reeve I don't like on Sentinel. Uh, you can use it though. It's a good area defense stripper and health boost, but really doesn't mesh as well with tech armor in my opinion. Energy drain works decently with tech armor, but again it's like you're gonna be draining shields to restore your shields with energy drain instead of using tech armor, so... I would skip that. Dominate might be fun, but it's for specialized hipster builds. Neural Shock doesn't have much of a place when you already have throw. Uh, you could use it, of course. Shredder ammo is horrible. Warp ammo, like I said, is pretty good. Inferno Grenade doesn't make sense. Flashbang doesn't make a lot of sense. And Stasis is actually the best. Lockdown and Elite target, get bonus damage, so... Basically what I would do on PC, I start with slam, or possibly warp ammo, but probably slam, and then sometime relatively early before Horizon, switch to stasis. That is that. On this character, I actually haven't even played Arrival, so I'd have to go through that to get to object row, because I want to do row with... I'll probably use this build. I have another Sentinel. Or actually, no, this was my Cryo Sentinel. Just to show it, if I was going to do a build with focusing on Cryo Blast, I would actually go ahead and get my tech armor and passive. And then we'll just take Guardian, of course. Throw it, unlock Warp, Warp the 3. And then we get Overload. Well, you skip Warp 3 for, to get Cryo flat faster, but anyway. We get to full Cryo Blast for area. Note that since Morden's recharge time is 4.5 anyway, he won't be quite as fast as Shepard because of difference in the passive, but he's still pretty fast. That's part of why I don't like Cryo on Sentinel. He can just take Morden. But, for fun, do it like that, and then what I like to do is just go ahead and get Heavy Throw on mine. So Heavy Throw for ragdolling single targets or possibly killing them. Full Cryoblast for group targets. And of course Assault Armor for group targets, and that's how I like to build the Cryo Sentinel. Anyway, 
see an object grow 